Hi, this is Rick from Hoagie's Garage. Today we're going to take a look at Scan XL Professional. This is a piece of software that interfaces with the OBD Link MX tool that we used and we reviewed earlier. Um, basically, it allows you to unlock more of the potential of the OBD Link MX tool. It has a lot of cool features in it. I look forward to talking about it with you. So, here when we open up the Scan XL Professional, it's going to tell us we're not currently connected to a vehicle. Um, through, before this, I actually paired it uh, via Bluetooth with my PC, so that's one thing you have to keep in mind. If you're going to use the Bluetooth OBD Link MX, then you got to make sure that your uh, computer has Bluetooth. But there's also a Wi-Fi version available, which might be better suited for laptops, so you've got that option as well. Looks like this actually isn't made by the uh, same company that makes the OBD Link MX tool. It's made by Palmer Performance Engineering. So. But anyways, we're going to go in here. It's uh, asking us, you're not currently connected to the vehicle. You want to connect now. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to ask me what the diagnostic system is. Looks like generic of the two is going to select. And then it's going to ask me what my vehicle is. So I've already entered in this vehicle. If you want, you can come in and change the vehicle. And then just enter in the VIN, the parameters, who the owner is, um, any sort of stuff like that. I'm going to select that. Opening OBD2 connection. Could not establish a connection to the scan tool. Maybe we should disconnect. You've just connected to the vehicle. Okay. Looks like that's okay. This is the main console window, so it'll tell us exactly what commands it's sending, whether it's connected to the tool or not. Um, we're going to go back sort of the main menu. So there's a couple different tabs that you have uh, uh, available here. There's Diagnostics, Performance, Dashboard, and then there's Tool Settings, and uh, that, that kind of is the main interface of the program. So again, we can read trouble codes. I cleared them in my last video, so I don't have any more trouble codes data view, this is kind of cool, so I am able to select which PIDs I want to monitor. It's already gone through in my vehicle and determined which ones I have available, and then I've selected a handful that I want to measure. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then hit this green button down here, and that's going to play. So then if I go back to my data view, I get the uh, actual data coming in over those PIDs. So it shows my lambda value, the load, the fuel trim, the engine RPM, and uh, whatever else I've selected. You have the min, max, and average too, so that's kind of neat. You can see exactly, um, you know, if one value sort of goes to a minimum or a maximum, maybe there's some issue where you can keep an eye on that. So if I go back to diagnostics, I'm going to stop this. Okay. Um, I can read the freeze frame data. So again, that freeze frame data is if I get a trouble code stored, it's going to take a snapshot of all the vehicle data and then store it in the freeze frame. I also have the ability to view my oxygen sensors as well. So if I do the Oxygen sensor test results. Looks like I'm like. Not sure why it's not working on my car. Maybe there's something else I have to configure. I can monitor the emission status. So it looks like everything is okay except for the evaporative system. Looks like in this alerts tab, I can add different alerts. So let's say um, uh, I'm testing something out or at a track day or something, and I want to set an alert if my engine temperature gets really high, or my transmission temperature gets high, or uh, my speed exceeds a certain value. I can add this alert, and then all of a sudden it'll pop up with an alert letting me know, hey, uh, this alert condition that you had set up. So a couple other cool things, I'm going to get back to this later, but there's a dyno option and a drag strip option. So the dyno uh, measures, the, it looks like it measures your horsepower and torque, and I'm not sure if it does that through the data, you actually need to have a dyno to do that. Something we'll experiment with in a minute. And then drag strip, you can measure your 0 to 60 time and your quarter mile time, and that's just done off of vehicle speed. And uh, it shows up this cool little interface, and uh, it'll give you the, the tree and tell you when to go, and you just kind of let it rip. This uh, 
dashboard section I, I found to be really cool. So um, you can set up graphs and watch the data as it comes by on a, on a graph so that might give you a better representation of what you're looking at. This data maps, I hadn't found this to be really useful, but um, maybe with some more talking, somebody can find this to be useful. Um, and then you have these gauges are pretty cool. So if I go back online, this is sort of like once you're monitoring, you click this button down here called monitor, and it brings you online to the engine. So um, got my throttle position there. to be a really neat option is over here in the tools menu you have a couple different neat things so this OBD terminal you can send your own OBD commands so if one isn't already implemented in the scan Excel professional software you can go ahead and send your own if you do some research on the internet you can find out that there's some other auto maker specific PIDs that you can send and get more data than what's already available in the default PIDs the other thing that's really neat too is the script editor. So I was messing around with this for a while, um, and uh, since I'm driving an ILX, uh, I wanted to find what the gear position was. And I did that based off of the vehicle speed and the engine RPM. So, you know, as you know, the uh, vehicle speed or the, the um, transmission and the tires are directly mated. So the output. The, if, you me if you measure the um, wheel speed and you measure the engine RPM, since those two are mated once the gears are engaged and the torque converter has been locked up, um, depending on what gear you're in, there'll be a different ratio between the engine speed and the uh, wheel rotation speed or your actual vehicle speed. Um, so I took some data and then I made this little script in here. And what it does is it pulls in RPM and vehicle speed. And then depending on certain threshold conditions that I set, if you divide the RPM by the vehicle speed, it gives you some ratio. And it you know, puts it into bins. So if the ratio is really high, um, that means that your gear is lower. But if the ratio starts to get really, really low, then your gear is a higher gear. And through this maps, I was able to create this gear detection algorithm. And once I created that, and you can do that just with data that you've already got coming in, or even the custom PIDs if you, uh, if you have an automaker specific one, I plop that into a dashboard. Here, my dashboard. So if I go ahead and monitor the, gate, the data, it looks like my target gear is zero, which is sort of what I have set up as the default.
it'll tell me what my staging time is, uh, and then eventually it's going to give me a printout. So I'm going to put my car into S mode, hit the start run button. Okay, I think we have enough room this time.